Welcome to 13th Street Worship. I'm Reverend Jen Logston Kellogg. This is Reverend Sarah P. Montgomery. We are so excited to be joining you virtually. We are embracing our season of both and, where we're doing both virtual and in-person worship. We would love for you to register your attendance and let us know that you are worshiping with us. There is an app. If you haven't already downloaded that, download the Boston Avenue UMC app, and there you can register your attendance. You can also do it through our website or through the link on our Facebook page. You can also, while you're there, go ahead and give a little money if you have an offering to offer. Uh, We are a church and we are trying to be good stewards of the resources that you entrust to us to do ministry in Tulsa, in Oklahoma, and around the world. Now, as Jen did mention, we are doing a both and model. So we do hope that if you can join us in person, that we invite you to be able to do that. We'll always be in person on Sunday mornings from 1130 until noon. And we'll be located at 13th and Boston in our North Park. And so you'll kind of see a park space right near our North parking lot. And we'll just gather together in circle time to be able to have some conversation around scripture and be able to pray together and have communion together. So we'd love to have you worship in either or both of those settings. Now, as we are kind of journeying towards the 100th commemoration of the Tulsa Race Massacre, our congregation was invited to be a part of the Greenwood Parade that will be happening that weekend. So we hope that you'll join us for that parade. It'll be the Saturday before, so Saturday, May 29th. Um, We'll meet at Carver Middle School at 9 a.m., And you can register for this on the app. We have a maximum of 50 participants that will be able to participate. And the parade will start at 11 a.m. So we have no idea how long we'll be there. (laughs) But we will be there and we will look forward to being able to, to march for justice and for reconciliation and for remembering this horrible, horrible moment in our history. And so I hope that if you're not able to join us, you'll find a way to commemorate that event as well. Now, as we gather ourselves in virtually and together in person, we always love to declare who it is that we are. And so we hope that you'll take this time to say this statement with us as well. We We are a place place to belong for for all people, seeking God's love without fear. So let us lift up our voices in song and praise to God.
So when we pray, we often invite you to bring a candle and light it if you're in a position where you can do that. When we pray together in person in worship, we light candles for those that we're praying for. So we invite you to do that at home. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we are so grateful for this um, season of our lives together. We pray for all of those in our church, in our worship service, 13th Street Worship, as we navigate into this new opening after COVID. For those that are still isolated, for those who are still affected um, by lack of vaccinations or lack of opportunity, we pray that as things return to normal, we do not lose sight of the lessons that we have learned. As we get excited about all of the, the things that are coming back and, and we realize that we are tending to over schedule ourselves and our families, we pray that you will remind us that it's okay to leave some things out. As we return to some kind of normalcy and we begin to think long term about our future, we pray, will you remind us, God, that this year off, or this year in which everything has been different, had lessons that will last the rest of our lives and for us to not lose sight of those. We pray, dear God, for all of the things that are happening in our city, in Tulsa, as we prepare to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre. And we pray for the truth-telling and the healing and the confronting our um, past that has to happen. We pray for awareness and for patience as we realize that different people and different families have different perspectives and different stories. And as we recount the violence and the insensitivity in which the violence was then covered up, we pray that you will show us a vision for our future in which those stories are still told, but they'll be told in a way that reminds us how far we've come. We pray, dear God, for people around the world who are experiencing violence today. Uh, we pray for situations in which uh, people are not getting enough, not getting enough to eat, not getting enough health care, not getting enough opportunity. And we pray for those situations in which people are maybe getting too much, in which um, people and perhaps people like me even are complacent because things tend to come too easily. We pray for those in our community that are looking at a new phase in life and trying to make decisions about what's next. And we pray for those that are feeling stuck. We pray for our children. We pray for our old people. And we pray for those in middle age who feel either stuck or challenged or bored, whatever it may be. We pray for our creation, that you will continue to use us to care for our environment and to teach us how to be good stewards of the earth. And most of all, God, we pray that you will continue to form us in the image of your Son, of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Hi everyone, my name is Reverend April Coates and I'm so excited uh, to be with you starting in July as the pastor over the 13th Street Worship Experience and also uh, missions and I'm, I'm sure I'm many, many other things. Just a few things about me. Um, I'm not married yet. <laughs> um, I do have a longtime boyfriend, Patrick McPherson, who is the pastor at Muskogee First United Methodist Church, where I've uh, been volunteering the past six months. I'm coming off of the leave of absence um, after about a year. Uh, I took some time to explore law school and really realized that while that is definitely a calling for some people, that my calling is in the church and helping equip others to serve in the world and be good advocates of our families and good advocates of, of children. Um, I'm excited to be able to work with you all in 13th Street Worship as we continue to bridge worship for people who don't necessarily feel comfortable in a traditional worship space or um, in a traditional traditional worship setting. I'm excited to dream together about creative ways that um, we can we can do that. Creative ways through music, through worship arts. I'm really passionate about that. How do we visually connect people through through technology, through art, um, through music, through different things. How do we connect people into into worship um, in new expressions um, and new ways? And so I'm really excited to be joining you all and excited to see what God will do um, with us together and ways that we together um, can worship and praise God and also how we can then translate um, what we learn in worship together, um, how we can translate that into service um, to our neighbors and how we can really um, then go out and be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. And so um, I'm so excited to begin this work and to see you all in July. Feel free to connect with me uh, through Facebook or through Instagram, through Twitter, um, through email, through text messaging, all of these things. Um, Sarah will have the information for you. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing from you and ways um, that you're excited and ways that you think we can grow as well. So don't hesitate to reach out to me as well. God bless, and I look forward to seeing you all in July. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. When Jesus finished saying these things, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son can glorify you. You gave him authority over everyone so that he could give eternal life to everyone you gave him. This is eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. I have glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I shared with you before the world was created. I have revealed your name to the people you gave me from this world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. This is because I gave them the words that you gave me, and they received them. They truly understood that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I'm praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you gave me, because they are yours. Everything that is mine is yours, and everything that is yours is mine. I have been glorified in them. I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world, even as I'm coming to you. Holy Father, watch over them in your name, the name that you gave me, that they will be one, just as we are one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So as we continue our series on images of Jesus, today we are coming to you from the cross at Camp Egan. So we're up on the end of a very steep 
trail. Yeah, it's taken us a little bit of time to get ready to, <laughs> to talk again. <laughs> and we are thrilled to be here. And the image that we're going to give of Jesus today is the Jesus that trusts us and bequeaths us with an inheritance. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. this is a pretty good place to remind ourselves of the inheritance that Jesus has given us, right, mm -hmm. Sarah? Oh, absolutely. You know, and so as we're looking at this text today, we can kind of think about that. Um, you know, Jesus, so on a, this is Ascension Sunday, so kind of reminding ourselves this is when Christ is now going back up to be with God eternally. And so is, is leaving um, his disciples, is leaving the community, and he's kind of reminding them of everything that, you know, that he's taught them mm -hmm. in a way, but then also of everything that is, um, that they're gonna be embodied to be able to do, that they've been equipped to be able to do. And so it's his farewell discourse. Right, right. And as a part of a farewell discourse, which this is uh, in scripture in the Old Testament, we see this, mm -hmm. um, this is kind of Jesus' last will and testament. Mm -hmm. And he is kind of reading out the will to the disciples. <laughs> That's right, and it's not being divided. So it's no. not like a normal will right. where like you get like 15% and you, yeah. you know, but it's yeah, kind of declaring like, you know, and I love this this phrase within it about um, everything that is mine is yours and everything that is yours is mine. Right. I mean, what a beautiful will and testament to the people of God. Right. Well, and we've seen in the Gospel of John the way Jesus talks about the world. You know, he mm -hmm. the word in Greek is the cosmos and it's mm -hmm. like all of creation and the imagery should take us back to the creation narrative mm -hmm. itself and mm -hmm. that God created um, this beautiful garden and created humanity in God, God's own image and put us in the garden so that we could be fruitful and so that we could have abundant life. That's right. And even says within that, um, you know, creation narrative, I am giving you um, you know, authority, which has been misused, mm -hmm. but I, I'm giving you the responsibility to care for this stewardship. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Stewardship, stewardship to care for all of this and, and to, to be able to take care of what it is that God has created and God saying, you know, again, everything that I've created is yours and you are a part of all of that creation as well. Right. And what Jesus intends for us to do to take care of that creation is to love the creation mm -hmm. and to love especially the people, mm -hmm. which, you know, we talked last week about, mm -hmm. about love and the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. and how um, Jesus gave us the command mm -hmm. to love and what that, what that looks like. So it, it is, we are bequeathed with the world, but we are being trusted. Jesus is trusting us to love the world and the people in it as Jesus loves them. Wow. Yeah. And that wow is great <laughs> because it's, you know, for the disciples and probably for many of us at times, that bequeathal, um, that uh, that abundance that we've been given, it, it causes some panic. Right. You know, because they have been following um, Christ for years and have don't know what to do without their leader. You know, they've already gone through their their leader being um, dead, <laughs> coming back to life. And but now what's going to you know, they're, they're having this sense of what is it like for us to be without the one who has been guiding us this whole time? Right. You know, what is this like for us? And then to be told, will you get all of this? Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm entrusting you to take care of all of this. And so I love, I always love the disciples because they, they so much remind me of what I would probably do, which is to kind of be like, hold on. <laughs> I, I'm grateful, thank you, but are you certain? Like, are you sure I can do all of this? Like, are you sure I can take care of all of this creation? Right, because it just, it's vast. Mm -hmm. it's such, it feels like such a vast responsibility. Mm -hmm. And so my hat, I don't know if you can see it, it says, pray, hustle, repeat. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, you know, feels like we have to really hustle in order to do what, what Jesus is asking us to do and says he trusts us to do. And Jesus has said, relax. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have to hustle. I've, I'm giving you my peace. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you my spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you everything you need to see this through. Mm -hmm. And I trust you. Yes. And what a gift of assurance. Yeah. You know, what a gift that in the midst of um, being given this very large responsibility, I mean, being stewards of the earth 
and of loving one another is a big responsibility. And so, but in the midst of being given that, they're also acknowledging that, um, that this is coming from a place of grace, a place of trust, a place of n- the knowledge that you can do this. Right. So it's not like, well, I guess you can have it and try it out and let's see what happens. It's, you know, Jesus is saying, you've got this. And it's not, you've got this. Right. It's y'all got this. So in our book that we're using as a guide from Jamie Clark Souls, Reading John for Dear Life, she has a a quote that we found that we Mm -hmm. wanted to share with you about this, um, that we as the church, the body of Christ, we are called to be a missional church And we can't do that unless we are involved in the most touchy, most vulnerable, most meaningful, most saving work that stands before us. If we are just a salon of sorts, (laughs) a glorified book club, a group that gathers to bat around interesting and even controversial ideas, a historical society whose chief aim is to protect our glorious heritage, then let's, for starters, at least have the decency to stop calling ourselves a church for Christ's Mm -hmm. sake. Mm -hmm. And for sure, let's stop calling ourselves a Christian church. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so to be reminded that, you know, there is responsibility within Mm -hmm. this Mm -hmm. and that it's gonna be hard. It's not easy. It's not easy to always love. It's not easy to be the stewards of love. It's not easy to be the stewards of creation all the time. I mean, there are things that I know I do that aren't, you know, the best for God's earth. Um, But how are we then, how are we wrestling with that as Mm -hmm. a faith community? Mm -hmm. How are we holding um, this, this vision, this core piece together that Christ trusts us? Right. And that that is foundational and at the center of all of it so that we can be that church that is a part of transforming the world. And and what does that look like then when we have, you know, I, I love that she said glorified book clubs because obviously you and I started a book club. <laughs> Which is a lot of fun and is very nourish, nourishing for us and for our building community. Right? That's right. It's, That's it's right. Good. That's right. So I think there's ways of thinking about, you know, um, I was just talking about this with somebody recently and, and talking about um, something that um, Tom Berlin and another gentleman, I'm losing, um, Love It Weems, the two of them kind of had this book and we're talking about in in everything that we do as a church, what is your so that statement? You know, Mm -hmm. what's the reason why? He said, sure, like you could have a book club, but what's the so that statement behind it? What is guiding and transforming folks? What is the part that is saying, we are doing this because we love Christ and we love the world and we want others to know of that love? What is that piece that connects that back so that we're not just a social club, Mm -hmm. you know, we're not just a a salon. (laughs) Um, We're not, you know, the thing for many years was talking about a cruise ship, you know, we're not a cruise ship with a bunch of different programs, but what is that? So that statement, Mm -hmm. you know, there are many different ways to connect um, within stewarding God's love to connect people to that love. But how are we embedding that? You know, right. into all that we do. Well, and what Jesus, I think, is getting at here is that, you know, he says the Father and I are one, and mm-hmm. we're. I'm. In, you're. You are inheriting this. You are connected to the Father and to me, and we are all together in this. That's right. In this family, in this relationship, and stewarding our home together is what you're being invited to. So, mm-hmm. our, so that is so that we can be in unity with God mm-hmm. through Jesus and the Holy Spirit and mm-hmm. with each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so as we as we hear this text today, um, you know, I really just, I want y'all to be able to, to carry with you um, that, that challenge. Mm-hmm. You know, you and I talked about this, that it's, it is a challenge. It is a, a piece of, um, of calling and commissioning. Um, and that it's something to be able to continue to carry. And, and what is it and how is it that you are gonna be able to do that, not just within our community 
but you know, with us y'all, yes, mm -hmm. but then also with you individually. Yeah. You know, this is a call for each one of us within our own individual lives as well. How are we um, being a part of, of knowing that Christ trusts us enough to be able to say, um, all of this is yours and all of this I'm already a part of, <laughs> you know, and so we are called to care for all of this. So think about it, pray about it, and continue to act and to live knowing that Christ trusts you to take care of this world and one another. Say amen. amen. Ponce aba mu poke le la vali pele maka kuba bana. Ponce aba mu poke le la vali pele maka kuba bana. Kuba bana, kuba bana, kuba bana. Bakwa lesa, kuba bana, kuba bana, kuba bana. Bakwa lesa, kuba bana, kuba bana, kuba bana. Bakwa lesa. Kuba bana, kuba bana, kuba bana, bakwa lesa. We're so glad that you were able to join us virtually for worship and we hope that you've enjoyed the views and the kind of that panorama and being able to really think about what is it that Jesus is giving to you and how are we going to be able to care for all of that and to take that on as a part of our calling within the world. Now a part of our calling as well is often to join within communities of faith and to be able to be a part of a larger community together, to be able to, to have accountability and, and to be able to ask the hard questions with one another and to have people that will pray for and support you. If you're a member or not, you can do all of that with us, but sometimes some folks like to have that membership in order to feel that stronger commitment and stronger accountability. And so if you are interested in joining the church through membership, reach out to Reverend Jenner myself. We'd love to be able to connect with you around that. We can help baptize you if you've never been baptized. And, and we would just love to be able to offer up that gift of community as a part of 13th Street Worship and a bigger part of Boston Avenue United Methodist Church. So as you get ready to depart, uh, we hope that you will take the opportunity as you go out into the world this week, just remember that God has entrusted us with this inheritance and that the image of Jesus, this image of Jesus that we've been talking about is that Jesus trusts you. Mm -hmm. So while Jesus comforts you and Jesus um, shows up when you are lonely and scared, so Jesus asks you to go show up for others and trust you to be the, what people need in the world. We invite you to go out in peace and be the hands and feet of Christ. 